Welcome to the state television company Western Armenia, broadcast for today. On 18 September, the regular session of the National Assembly of the Republic of Western Armenia has been held. The image from Lake Venom has created a lot of noise on social networks. The participants of the Armenian International Summit also discussed the narratives of Armenian identity, culture and brand at 16 roundtables. Sons of Western Armenia, Hovnanyan brothers, Difficulties of the Artsakh family after deportation, a year of instability and uncertainty of the future. The collapse of Artsakh is the greatest tragedy that happened in our lifetime. Avedik Chalabian. COP 29 is a global campaign against COP 29, the purpose of which is to reveal the real way of working in Azerbaijan, homeland. On 18 September, the regular session of the National Assembly of the Republic of Western Armenia has been held. The agenda of the session was presented by Nelly Harutsunyan, chairwoman of the National Assembly of the Republic of Western Armenia. In the first part of the agenda, the implemented events of the September list of official events of the Republic of Western Armenia were discussed. On 14 September, the opening ceremony of the Second Archery Cup of the Republic of Western Armenia took place with the participation of the highest officials of the state. On 15 September, the conference Gadizana Hit was held, which was also broadcast online through the Zoom application. The series of September events will conclude on 26 September, which another scheduled event which will also be broadcast via Zoom. At the end of the session, a number of current and important issues related to the activities of the Republic of Western Armenia were also discussed. Now let's tell about the video that published from the Nakhatamar island of Lake Vena has become very popular on all social networks and the image shown there has created a lot of noise, especially among Turkish users. It should be noted that there is a legend about Ahtamar Island in Lake Vana, according to which a huge monster lives there. And the user who published this video also tells about it. Many users shared that video and some claim that they have seen the monster of Lake Vana. People have divided into two groups around this legend. Some believe that the monster really exists and some claim that it is just a legend. Despite all the research, the fact of the monster's existence of the denial has not yet been proven. The Second World Armenian Summit, organized by the Office of the Chief Commissioner for Diaspora Affairs, has started in Yerevan. During the first day of the summit, two panel sessions and nine discussions dedicated to the topic security and peace were held. During the discussions, the security of Eastern Armenia, protection of the rights of displaced Armenians of Artsakh, lobbying, public diplomacy, information securing were in the center of attention. The summit participants also looked at topics related to Armenian identity and culture in an attempt to revise stereotypes. At the end of a day, a special concert of the Armenian State Symphony Orchestra took place. The four of Nanyan brothers, Jirai Gevor, Krai, and Vahagin are among the most important representatives of the housing construction industry in the world. In 1959, they jointly founded the Hovnanyan Brothers Corporation, Hovnanyan Brothers Corp., then separated and each organized its own company. From the United States to Armenia, the name of the Hovnanyan Brothers is perceived as a synonym for a high-quality house. The brothers were born in Kirkuk, Iraq, but in 1948, immigrated to the United States. Their parents are survivors of the genocide committed against Armenians and come from the cities of Sebastia and Malatya. Each of the Hovnanyan brothers has earned many commendations, but among them Hovnanyan Enterprises Company of Gevor Hovnanyan, one of the largest organizations in the home construction industry in the United States, has earned unique achievements. Hrai Hovnanyan is a leader in the field of designing residential districts for the elderly. The brothers give an input to the development of American style suburbs in Armenia through the Vahagni district. It has been a year that the Armenians of Artsakh, being forcibly displaced, have been struggling with 
housing and everyday difficulties. Artak Vartanyan, with his four children, lives on rent in Bovian after moving five times. Vartanyan's wife, Nayane, died in September 2023 as a result of the explosion of the the Panagert Wealth Warehouse. Now Artak is taking care of the children alone and living on 5,000 dirhams a month in government support, which is not enough to cover expenses. The Armenian government has announced a housing assistance program for about 25,000 families in Artsakh. The Vartanian family received 18 million drums of support, but the money is not enough to buy a house. Implementation of the housing program is slow and most applications are still being processed. Social activists criticize the program, stating that it is ineffective and strictly regulated. Artak fondly remembered his life in his native village of Zenk, where he thought chess and his wife worked as a village nurse. They were engaged in agriculture, kept bees, and had a large vegetable garden. They left all this when they had uh, to leave their homeland. After the 2020 war, they continued to practice beekeeping in Stepanagert. Now starting a new life for the first time without the wife, Artak's main concern is finding a stable home. Artak hopes to find a job and return to his beekeeping business, but for now it is difficult to combine child care and job search. In the Facebook post of the Hawaii Fe initiative, Abetik Chalabian refers to the tragic decline of Artsakh. In 2022, after 10 December, Azerbaijani closed the road to Shushi, starting the long siege and attack on Artsakh. Despite the resistance of the Artsakh army, the forces were unequal and Artsakh, abandoned by everyone, surrendered. Chalabian sees this as the greatest tragedy and the warning to get rid of our sins, repent, heal, live as a nation and find new strength. Otherwise, we will have no future as a nation in this predatory environment. And sooner or later, the tragedy that happened to Artsakh will also afflict this last Armenian piece of land left from the once glorious Great Armenia. For him, the revival of Artsakh and the creation of a powerful Armenia is the duty of the Armenians. Under the auspice of the United Nations, the 29th Conference of the COP29 Conference of the party seems to examine in detail the issues related to the change of the biosphere and pollution, a concern that has a significant impact on the climate. This meeting brings together representatives from nearly 200 countries who believe that the Earth's deteriorating biosphere can be quickly saved, including the natural and man-made disasters emanating from Azerbaijan, one of the producers of black gold. Baku calmly and self-confidently tries to protect the biosphere, inviting the world under its corrupt roof. A world whose leaders are well aware of how much Azerbaijan is polluting the Caspian Sea and its surroundings with its oil-producing and refining facilities. For Hayorti, the residence has a unique way to face. In order to facilitate its advance during the attacks on Artsakh, the Azeri army, in cooperation with the Turkish army and the extremist terrorist organizations of Turkey, released chemical substances and set fire to extensive forests. COP 29 is a global anti-COP 29 campaign that aims to expose the true workings of the Azerbaijani government. This is a unique opportunity to discuss and reveal the tragedy of the victims captives and prisoners of the 44-day war. It is a strange phenomenon that that page is closed for the current authorities of Yerevan, but not for a human being struggling for justice. Every intelligent Armenian has the right to ask a question. Is there any other country in the world whose government so visibly ignores its citizens? Dear viewers, this was all for today. I wish you peace and harmony. Goodbye.